guys, welcome back. Today we're out here to ride a moped on the range. Well, not really a moped. We're here to fire a high point carbine. Now it could be said that these are like riding mopeds. It's fun to do until your friends see you. But the truth of the matter is these things have a fairly good reputation for being reliable. They also have a reputation for being very high reliable. Can't say they're high quality. <laughs> these things are extremely poorly made, but they seem to hold up and work quite well. So I can't really ding them. They're very affordable. They certainly fill a niche that needs to be filled, but I've never really had much interest in them, despite knowing that they're known for their reliability, until they came out with the 10 millimeter, and that's what this is. So of course, I had to own the 10 millimeter high point. It became a quest of mine. I searched high and low all the distributor websites trying to find one. Nobody had one in stock. Jason and I drove down to the NRA show in Dallas, Texas, hitting every single gun store we could on the way looking for this elusive creature. Saw one and it was painted in a camo pattern I just couldn't bring myself to buy. So we finally went to West Forth Guns in Gary, Indiana after we got home and they had multiple 10 millimeter high point carbines, all flavors. And we simply couldn't believe it. So I had to make one mine. So for less than $400, I present to you my high point carbine. Now we did do an Instagram video where we did a first shots and the gun worked fine right out of the box. Now still, again, I've still not taken my stickers off and I've still not oiled or cleaned or done anything to this firearm. We just fired a couple of magazines out of it just to confirm function and it worked fine. Today, we're just gonna come out here, shoot it, get it sighted in and have some fun with it. Now we're gonna peel the, the stickers off this one says, caution, this carbine has a short barrel. It's 16 inches, so it's not really a short barrel. Don't extend your fingers past the muzzle. Even with my long ape hands getting towards the end of the, the handguard, I can't get my fingers past the muzzle. And this label may be removed by the owner of the firearm. That would be me. Warning, you are at risk or injury of injury or death handling this firearm, period. It really says that. Caution, for safety, before handling this firearm, read and understand the following information in the instruction sheet. If there's anything you do not understand, seek advice from someone qualified in the safe handling of firearms. This label may only be removed by the firearm owner, that is me, and I have not read the owner's manual. Oh, come on, High Point, seriously? Now you gotta get goo gone to get that off. Aww. Look at that, went and just dorked up the appearance of my beautiful carbine. And this one is just to keep this really spongy lint collector. Guys, this is like tacky, like those kids' toys that your kids throw and stick against the wall, they leave a wet mark on the wall. That's what this is. It's a tacky, rubbery, moist something or other. And another warning, this firearm is not equipped with a magazine lockout safety and can still be fired with the magazine removed, okay. And this is another sticker that's only supposed to be removed by its owner, which is me. Okay, I think we've read all the lawyer speak and it's time now to shoot our high point carbine in 10 millimeter. Oh, and guys, they threaded the barrel. If this thing wasn't already dangerous enough, 10 millimeters is a high pressure cartridge, folks. They've given us the ability to suppress it. So guess what we're gonna do today? We're gonna shoot some 10 millimeter, we even have some buffalo bore, and we're gonna suppress this thing. I'm wearing safety glasses for a reason. I trust High Point, they've got a good reputation, but still there's something about ZMAC and 10 millimeter and straight blowback and suppressors that kind of worry me. So I have invested in some high quality eye protection. <laughs> All right guys, let's get to shooting this bad boy. I'm really kind of excited about it. I love 10 millimeter, I really do. So it turns out that these magazines that the high point 10 millimeter carbine ship with, or magazine, I should say, are hard to come by. And so my friends over at Gun Mag Warehouse hooked me up, got me some extra magazines. So if you buy one of these, only expect one mag in the box. And then when you go to find more of these, you're gonna be shopping around for a while. So check out gunmagwarehouse.com. That's where I got these from, or shop around online and see if you can find them. So apparently these things are gonna be like SCAR magazines there for a while. All right, so 10 rounds. It's one round shy of being an assault weapon, according to Diane Feinstein, Chucky e. Schumer, and the NRA and everybody else. Okay, so 
the bolt does lock back on the last shot fired, so the bolt is locked to the rear. I'm going to pull the bolt to the rear and release it, and it kind of hesitantly grabs that first round. Now, you do have a safety right here, so you can see the, the travel of the bolt right here. Um, this bolt just screws in as part of the disassembly method. Comes out right there where that big opening is. Does not have a magazine safety. We removed that little sticker so we know that for certain. And that's kind of a goofy spot for, yeah, actually it works pretty good for the safety, but now it's on fire. All right, challenge target. About uh, 25 yards away or so. Let's see how this thing shoots. Now, how is that possible? Two rounds landed on top of each other, and two rounds completely missed. Well, I shot him until he was down. That's weird. Okay, we'll just keep shooting. We'll shoot him in the head over here. Yeah, it hit paper. Well, we thought we had it zeroed. Now it seems to be shooting right. Same ammunition, too. Shoot some 180 grain XTPs. This is some Freedom Munitions 10 millimeter. It's kind of hesitant to pick up that first round. Okay, let's try it again. Nice shotgun group. So this thing is far from highly accurate. I would say it's about as accurate as a 12 gauge shotgun with buckshot. Try some different ammo. Come on, little guy. All right. There's not much recoil to speak of. Look at that, guys. It is chewing the left shoulder of the target up. Now, if you look below, we did zero this red dot sight off a bag earlier today, and now it's just, come on, dude, I wanna like you. Don't do this to me. Let's try some different ammunition, because obviously that ain't working for us. Huh, I'm scared to think what's gonna happen when we put a can on this thing. We're gonna find out though. I have the high point carbine set up so that it has a 100% co-witness. So this is a primary arms uh, red dot sight that has the side knob on it versus the two button version. I kind of like the knob because it reminds me of the aim point, which I kind of like the aim points. But we have an absolute 100% co-witness. So my sight picture is right dead smack center of the red dot sight. Now, I will say that this is you know sitting on a very low mount that comes with the factory mount. Uh, with the primary arms red dot sight, it could benefit from a slight elevation change because even the iron sights are really, really kind of low with this little rubber cheek piece thing here. You really have to press your face down to get a proper sight picture with this thing. I'm surprised the high point hasn't raised the sight picture up just a little bit, but I may put a little bit of a riser on there, make it a lower third co-witness or it may not co-witness at all. I've also noticed that I can take the, uh, the rear sight completely off. There's just a couple of screws holding it in place. Then my 1913 pick rail comes all the way back here. You can also take the front sight out. You can adjust it for elevation with a simple screw in the front, just move it up and down, or you can take the screw out and just take the front sight off altogether and just run a red dot sight. I don't know what I'm gonna do just yet. I'm more concerned with the accuracy issues that we're having right now. So you got some more of the 180 grain XTPs. These are from Freedom Munitions. We're gonna try these again. We really thought we had this thing. This is weird, guys. The bolt will not go any further to the rear hardly kind of sticking a little bit. You may have to take it apart, which I'm dreading doing, and uh, clean it up because now it's acting a little bit weird. It's sticking a little bit. The bolt won't go all the way to the rear by pulling on the charging handle uh, without excessive force. All right, so let's try shooting a group again. We're only, guys, we're like 25 yards away from the target. We're not that far away. And see if we've maintained zero. So again, I have 100% co-witness with my red dot sight and my iron sight picture here. So nothing has shifted. And we'll see if we can get this thing to group. It doesn't have a bad, holy cow, guys. So that was a clean trigger break, absolutely clean trigger break. This is unbelievable. You gotta see this. We're 25 yards away. There is something, so the safety will keep the bolt from coming to the rear. So the weapon's clear. 
You, see, you gotta see this. Just come here. Sorry to do this to you, Jason. Go from the shade to the sunlight. But guys, <laughs> this thing was zeroed not that long ago, like four magazines ago. 25 yards away, guys. It's not a great distance. I was aiming right here, nice clean trigger press and brake on a bag, and this is where the round hits. The iron sights, the red dot sight are co-witnessing perfectly right here. We know we had it zeroed because we zeroed it before we started filming this afternoon. And four magazines later, it's shooting six inches right. Let's go back and see what it does. It may be shotgunning them. It may have just shifted. I don't know. I don't even know if the barrels tighten the thing at this point. Let's go see if we can figure out what's going on with the gun. Guys, there's nothing loose on the barrel, nothing loose anywhere on the gun. The sight rail's nice and tight. We have perfect co-witness with the irons and the red dot sight. I cannot figure out what's going on. The only thing it could be is ammo related. Now that I have the magazine out, I mean, the bolt's moving freely. Let's see what happens. Some more of the Freedom 180 grain stuff. All right, let's see if it comes back to center and then we'll try some different ammo. There's a reason why I'm wearing protective eyewear today, guys, and this may be it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that one may actually want to went off the paper. It went off the paper. Guys, all right, so. <laughs> Perfect rest. This thing has a decent trigger in it. Clean brakes, clean press, off a rest, 25 yards, and it's shooting all over the place. One round went completely off the man-sized target. All right, so, again, take safety off here, take that round out. There is nothing visibly wrong with the gun. Everything is tight. Nothing is moving on this gun, and we still have perfect co-witness. So we're going to take the 180 grain XTPs out of the mix. This is SIG, elite performance ammunition. This is a 180 grain full metal jacket, okay? Let's go ahead and see what happens with this. Aiming at that little bullseye again. Dead center. Stacked it right on top of it. Then guess it's in the same hole. Wait, there's an extra round down there. There's one of them that went wild. All right, so. Looks like you chewed the center out of it. It chewed the center out of it with that one. I had one round go wild though. All right, let's go look at this. Because this is crazy. So it would appear that we definitely have an ammo related issue. We didn't miss this one, did we, Jason? 
like what is that that is from the sig the wild one from the sig so we have the target it looks like that one freedom one two three four five six seven there's seven i can count for sure that would be eight but i'm unless some of them went off the target the most of the 10 rounds went right here to point of aim we had this one crazy round but now the freedom munitions yeah that is two holes in one so that accounts for all four shots fired there but we have aiming here first shot here second shot here third shot here fourth shot there so it's way off target then we have nine rounds i believe here with one tenth round just going wild for no reason huh the sig ammo definitely shoots better so thankfully we have a bunch of that out here this afternoon it's a little bit warmer than the freedom ammo but there's something weird going on there's no reason for that to happen or this this was zero this this ammo was doing this before we even started this afternoon and then it just opened up and went crazy huh all right well there's some hope in that somewhat there is an important side note here my pink up lula works just fine with the single stack magazines of the high point carbine these up lulas are amazing devices these high point carbine magazines are a little bit unique in the way that they're shaped so you can't push the magazine you can't push the rounds straight down into the magazine like you can with more conventional mags because it has this little lip when I push the round down see how that lip right there comes out and it's keeping the nose of the round up that's probably for feeding geometry but you have to push the round back and down so you have to start it oops one for my homies you have to start it push it back and see how those front lips that are turned in I want to hold that nose up and then push it back but the up lula still works you just drop them in no issues whatsoever so moral of that story guys get yourself an up lula so the ergonomics on this little thing aren't that bad it feels pretty good um, it's awkward to take apart so it's safe to say i won't be doing that this afternoon i didn't bring out the owner's manual but i did watch a disassembly video on youtube while we were out here and yeah i'll do that back at the shop you can take it apart you can clean it uh, it doesn't say to send it into high point to have it maintenance uh, so it is doable just read the manual watch instructional video make sure you know what you're doing the sights i think both jason and i agree that these sights while adjustable for windage and elevation they seem to be okay they sit way too low with this rubber cheek piece which you need because this thing would be a real jaw biter if you didn't have that rubbery cushion there um, you have to push your face really really hard to get your cheek down low enough to get a proper sight picture uh, high point needs to raise that sight up the sight system up just in general i may wind up taking this rear sight off taking the front sight off and just putting a medium riser on the red dot sight which will make it a lot more ergonomic the gun's been 100 reliable so far uh, the only problems we've had is feeding that first round on a 10 round magazine and then sometimes when the bolt locks open you put a fresh magazine you try to pull that charging handle to the rear and let it go it won't let go it won't you can't push it any further to the rear without really pushing on it oh but it does have a recoil buffer in it check this out so in case you're shooting that really hot 10 millimeter stuff you have a recoil buffer <laughs> yeah right so anyway let's see if it's uh reliable with some more of these sig 180 grain ball rounds you can definitely feel it locked open magazines drop free stick a fresh mag in pull that bolt to the rear you kind of have to help that round home that first round but after that seems to work just fine and with these sig rounds it's shooting to point of aim so overall for less than 400 bucks <laughs> I love it what can I say let's load up some of the super hot buffalo bore rounds and see if we can't blow ourselves up
in my never-ending quest to blow myself up, I have some buffalo bore, 200 grain, what they call their heavy loads, which are 1,200 feet per second. And then I have some underwood ammunition here, and this is their 150 grain at 1425. So let's load up a magazine of each. Ooh, and look at these guys. These have those extreme penetrators or defender tips. Those are nasty looking. I love underwood ammo, so we'll see if these things will feed in the uh, in the high point or not. It's two, three, four, five, six, nine, and ten. That up blue will make short work. And then the buffalo bore, I'm going to use my cipher microtech to cut this open here. And then you have to pinch. And I'm going to spray these all over the place, I can tell. There we go. All right. And then we have the Buffalo Bore Heavy Loads. We're going to load into this magazine. And we're going to see if the old high point is going to take this or not. Buffalo Bore Underwood. Oh yeah, and did I mention, I'm gonna run the suppressor, which is really gonna up the ante because this increases the uh, velocity of the bolt. Like I said, I am trying to blow myself up this afternoon. Jason, do you have the password to upload this video? Should I die here this afternoon? No. Okay, Jason says he doesn't have the password. I'll find it right now. All right, all right, here goes the underwood. This is the 150 grain stuff at 1400 and some odd feet per second. And there we go, come on. Uh, all right, let's see what we got. And I think I broke the gun. Oh, it malfunctioned. It doesn't like the, the shape of those underwood loads, I don't think. Thought I broke the gun. Oh no, it's going to be one of those malfunctions where you got to strip the magazine out. Get in there. Come on. You know you want to go in there. Oh, you little fart. Okay. There we go. Ha ha ha. And that's a forward assist as well. All right. So, I did not blow myself up with the underwood loads. Here come the 200 grain buffalo bore heavy loads. All right. Stand back, Jason. This is going to leave a mark. <laughs> what do you know, guys? I didn't blow myself up, and I was actually hitting what I was aiming at at about 45 yards away. Okay, so it isn't going to blow up if you run it suppressed with the hot stuff. Now, I can't say go out and run 2,000 rounds of buffalo board through your high point carbine. Somebody will go do that, and they'll blow, it, blow themselves up, and they'll say Mac told me to do it. That's not what I'm telling you to do, but uh, lawyer speak aside. I'm uh, pretty impressed with the fact this thing's holding up to the fact I'm suppressing it and shooting some of the heavier stuff you can find out there on the market right now for 10 millimeter. I'm liking it more and more. So one of the things that's a little bit awkward about this thing, and there's a lot of things that are awkward about this thing, but as I mentioned, this is your charging handle that unscrews easily. I've tried to lock it down. It's not going to stay put. But also, 
this little disc that just kind of flops around that is under spring pressure, you can push it into the receiver and that becomes a manual bolt hold. I think when I'm struggling with this charging handle, I'm inadvertently getting that sleeve into that locked open position and that's why I'm struggling with getting the bolt back when it's just got to come back an eighth of an inch to release to pick up that round of the magazine. So that's probably operator error, but seriously guys, that thing needs a spring so it takes a conscious effort to engage the bolt stop, which it's engaged right now just by gravity, okay? So let me pull that to the side, hold it on its side so I can't inadvertently engage it. Put some more of the SIG ammunition in, pull it to the rear, help it home with the palm of my hand, and it's ready to fire. And there, again, is your safety lever. Guys, for less than 400 bucks, this thing is a lot of fun. Now, how well will it hold up to the use of heavy 10 millimeters over time? Ask me again in five years. I don't know. I do plan on shooting this quite a bit. I think it's fun that I can suppress it. It does appear that the threads are concentric to bore at least close enough to get a 45 can on the 10 millimeter. 45 is right around 11 millimeter, 11 millimeter for 10 millimeter is 10 millimeter. So I have a little bit of margin of error there, but everything seems to be working just fine. It's showing no signs of not being concentric to bore because when I put the suppressor on, it shoots to the exact same point at aim. So that tells me that things are lining up pretty nicely. The sights, way too low, high point, raise the stinking sights. If you're gonna run a red dot, put a small riser on it. It'll make it a lot easier. Keep your cheek off this thing if you're shooting the 10 millimeter because it will jar your cheekbone quite a bit, especially with the stouter stuff. Other than that, 100% reliability with everything except the underwood and the underwood had that screwdriver tipped shaped bullet that caused a feeding problem. I don't expect it to feed everything. All the ball ammunition we fired this afternoon from the Buffalo bore hot stuff down to the SIG shot great, the Freedom Munitions shotgun pattern we have no idea why it's shooting that ammo all over the place it usually works in other guns this one absolutely no go matter of fact it's so crazy i would say it's unsafe to shoot because it is missing a man-sized target at 20 some yards so all that aside this is a fun less than 400 dollars blaster if you want to get into the 10 millimeter carbine game if you can find one pick one up keep in mind the magazines are going to be hard to find i don't think, don't hold me to this, I don't think they make a 10 millimeter handgun yet. And that might be why these magazines are so scarce. It's a totally new product to go with this gun. And the model number on this is the 1095. That's the model for the 10 millimeter carbine. All right, guys, you got it loaded up. You got 10 rounds left to shoot out of it before we pack things up and head out this afternoon. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, please swing by and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. We do live streams every week for our Patreons. We do all sorts of cool giveaways. We do the blowout prices from Copper Custom, which is our online store. We do all sorts of cool stuff for our Patreons to give something back to you guys for directly supporting us. YouTube doesn't support us financially anymore. We need, we need you guys to keep it going. So thank you to our Patreons and please consider becoming a Patreon supporter, but also consider supporting other content creators out there that also have Patreon pages. That, and you can always pick up a cool t-shirt from our friends over at Forge from Freedom. We do have a link to that down below, along with Patreon. Also check out Fold30.com, link down below. Uh, YouTube's kicking off gun channels. You know, never enough am ammo got the uh, band hammer. Um, Small Arm Solutions got the band hammer. If that's happening, any gun channels are going to full 30 where they're fully monetized, and that is the lifeboat for the firearms community. Guys, thanks for 10 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Here we go, last 10 rounds. It's pretty controllable. Yep, I like it. Jason, sorry. You know what's funny, guys? We were over here uh, loading magazines, and Jason goes, yeah, that's kind of cool. I think I might want one. <laughs> I knew he would give in.